Friends, good evening. Today I stand before you to present few more facts with documented evidence with regards to the unforgivable sin that the previous YSRCP government committed by adulterating Lord Balaji's Laddu Prashad. Today we have on our screen a resolution which was passed by TTD and signed by none other than Y.V. Subbaradi, the previous chairman and uncle of Jagan Mohan Reddy. So you can see here very clearly, this is a resolution number 371 signed by Y.V. Subbaradi. So what was this resolution for? This resolution is to alter the tender conditions for the supply of ghee. So what they have done, everything in a pre-planned manner, the first step they have done is they have altered the tender conditions. If you look at the tender conditions that were altered, you will be surprised to know various conditions that were entirely removed and a few conditions which were tweaked. For example, previously, for all kinds of ghee tenders for procurement of cow ghee, there were conditions like the dairy should have been operational at least for the past three years. This is the existing tender condition. YV Subbaradi as TTD chairman, just to collude with companies like AR Foods, just to benefit companies like AR Foods, he had changed that condition to what? The dairy should have been operational at least for the past one year. They have changed the three-year criteria operational experience to one year. And few conditions they have entirely removed. Previously, there was a condition which says the dairy should have been collecting at least 4 lakh liters of cow milk per day for the last one year. This condition number 19 is entirely removed. Condition number 20, it also shall have a processing capacity of minimum of 8 tons of cow milk fat or ghee in excess of its market requirement. Even that condition was entirely removed. So, like this, they have either changed or entirely removed certain conditions. And also there is one other important condition which they have changed. Here you can see condition number 72. Annual turnover of the firm should be at least 250 crore. This is the minimum requirement for any company which wants to participate in the bid for the ghee tender. That was reduced to 150 crore. Annual turnover of the firm should be at least 150. 250 had been reduced to 150. So like this, YV Subbaradi himself as chairman, through a special resolution, had changed all the tender, most of the tender conditions in the procurement for the procurement of cow ghee to favor companies like AR Foods. So pre-plannedly what they did, they changed the tender conditions by colluding with AR Foods. And then after tweaking, after changing all these conditions, then they have gone for the tender. And today, if you look at the annual turnover of AR Foods, in the Minister of, uh, as per the information of Ministry of Corporate Affairs, it is less than 250 crore. It is only 244. So AR Foods, they know that their annual turnover doesn't meet the actual requirement to participate in the tender. That's the reason why they have colluded, you know, and they have reduced the annual turnover requirement in the tender from 250 to 150. And this was signed by none other than Jagan Reddy's uncle, Vaivi Subbaradi. That is the reason why he is running away from appearing before the vigilance inquiry. Though vigilance inquiry had served four notices, he has not, he has not responded and he is running away. Now he has gone to the court, asking the court to cancel the vigilance inquiry. Why is he doing that? Because he had done all these crimes. He himself had signed these kind of resolutions. And the second part, is if you look at the whole story. So now, there are other 
doubts that are being raised. So the YSRCP, after getting caught red-handed, you know, by adulterating cow ghee with animal fat, now they are trying to, you know, shift the blame, confuse people, mislead people, you know, by doing all kinds of uh, false propaganda. What they are saying? They are saying now that the ghee that was, the adulterated ghee that was supplied by AR Foods was never used. So where is the question of adulteration, you know, in the cow ghee? The adulterated cow ghee being used in the preparation of uh, Lord Balaji's Prashad Laddu. But if you look at the facts, the tender to procure ghee through which AR Foods was selected was released on 12th of March. 2024, when Karunakar Reddy was the chairman and Jagan Reddy is the chief minister of the state. This tender was finalized in favor of AR Foods on 8th of May, when Jagan Mohan Reddy is the chief minister. The purchase order for supply of ghee to AR Foods was released on 15th of May, 2024, when Karunakar Reddy, Jagan Reddy's another uncle was the TTD chairman. And he himself, Jagan Reddy himself, is the chief minister. So the whole process of allocation of this final allocation of this tender, finalization of this tender in favor of AR Foods happened during the YSRCP regime. And the purchase order even was re released only during their regime. So the whole crime, you know, colluding with AR Foods, you know, it is a classic example of quid pro quo. You give us the money what we want, we will change all the tender conditions. We will do whatever we want. We are not bothered about the kind of ghee you supply. So, knowingly they have con com committed this unforgivable sin. So, after the purchase order was released, AR Foods in total had supplied 8 tankers of ghee. This is very important. A to total of 8 tankers of ghee arrived from AR Foods, AR Dairy. The first four tankers came on 12th of June, 20th of June, 25th of June and 4th of July. So, the first four tankers came on these dates. These four tankers were tested in the laboratory that is existing in Tirumala. It is a very basic laboratory which conducts basic tests to check the amount of moisture that is present, the color and other basic parameters. So, when these four tankers were checked, they passed the basic test at the TTD lab because the existing TTD laboratory in Tirmala does not have the capacity to find out the adulterating agents. It is a very basic lab. So, it had passed. As it had, the lab is very basic, all these four tankers, they have passed the test. After they have started, four tankers were used in the making of the laddus. After these four tankers passed the basic test, that ghee was consumed, they, it was used to make the laddus. And when that ghee was, after that ghee was consumed to make the laddus, devotees started complaining of foul smell from the laddus. As this ghee that was supplied by AR Foods and that was consumed by TTD to make the prasad, Pilgrims found foul smell coming out of laddus. Then, you know, the TTD started acting. So, after these four tankers were consumed and after the devotees started complaining, four more tankers arrived in the month of July. Those four tankers then were stopped because by then pilgrims have started complaining of foul smell, the laddus not being, you know, of good quality, when all those complaints started coming, then they have stopped the other four tankers which arrived from AR Foods and samples from these four tankers, the second batch of four tankers were sent to NDDB, National Dairy Development Board's Calf Laboratory, which is the most advanced laboratory in, in, in India, in the entire country. So, then it was found out through the NDD report that animal fats were present like lard, you know, fish oil, beef taro, all those were found out through a report of the NDDB 
when they tested the samples from the second batch of four tankers that were arrived, that have arrived. So, NDDB lab confirms the use of animal fat. So, this is the entire story, you know, of the total amount of ghee that was supplied by AR Foods, the amount of ghee that was consumed, the amount of ghee that was kept aside and the samples were sent to NDDB. So, through this entire, you know, from this entire scenario, you can clearly understand that yes, ghee from AR Foods was consumed. So, whatever false propaganda that the YSRCP is undertaking, you know, is completely false. They are just saying, they are very, you know, simply saying, you know, that the, uh, the EO had said that the samples from which uh, uh, the consignment of ghee that was taken was never used. Yes, samples from these four tankers that were sent to NDDP, that ghee was not used. But what about the previous set of four tankers that arrived? Was that consumed or not? This is the same quality of ghee that was supplied at the same rate of 319 rupees. AR Foods did not supply the first batch of four tankers at some 500 or 600 rupees a kilo. They have supplied their entire lot of eight tankers at the same price of 319. So how can you say that adulterated ghee, ghee adulterated with animal fats was not consumed. So this clearly explains that four tankers of adulterated ghee was consumed and only after the pilgrims have complained, the second batch of four tankers were, uh, samples were taken and the EO, Mr. Shamal Rao had sent them to NDDB. So from this you can understand that how knowingly what they have done first, they have changed the tender regulations, tender conditions to favor companies like AR Foods. And second, you know, the entire tender process, finalization of tender, releasing the purchase order, everything happened during the YSRCP regime. And after that, TTD had received eight tankers, total eight tankers. That was clearly stated both by the Honorable CM Nara Chandrababu Naidugaru and also by the Honorable Minister Sri Nara Lokesh. So, eight tankers were received. The first four were consumed and after we have received complaints from the pilgrims, the second batch of four tankers were stopped, samples were collected, sent to NDDB and then it was found out that animal fats were present. And after the report came out, now they are asking one more question. Why did the government wait for almost like one and a half month? Why did they take so much of time, you know, to make it public? Mr. Naidu is a very responsible leader. The government today is a very responsible government. As soon as it got the report in its hand, it had initiated action immediately. The first thing they have done is, they have blacklisted the company, AR Foods. They have sealed the four tankers which had this adulterated ghee. They have sent notices to them and then the TTD constituted an expert committee to look into the whole issue and give its recommendations. Then a vigilance inquiry was ordered. So all this happened in those 45 days. After we got the report, the government had initiated so many things. And the Honorable Chief Minister, after he got the preliminary report from the vigilance inquiry, then he made a statement after reconfirming the entire, you know, thing that had happened. You know, the background of this, after getting complete knowledge of what exactly transpired, who were involved, then only he made a statement. So that is what a responsible chief minister would do. No one would, you know, hurriedly, you know, come before the public and speak like Jagan Reddy. We've seen how Jagan Reddy had spoken a few days back. He's, he's just saying very simply, this is very common. It happens all the time. What is so big about it? So this is the reaction of Jagan Reddy. He you are dealing with the sentiments of crores of Hindus across the globe. And you are speaking so casually. Do you expect Mr. Naidu also uh, to you know, speak in the same tone? Never. That is the reason why he came before the public after taking action, after setting things right here. In these 45 days, 
fresh standards were also called and the Karnataka Milk Federation was selected and Nandini's ghee supply was also restored. And now you are getting quality unadulterated, quality laddus with unadulterated ghee. So after doing all this, then he came in front of him in front of public. He told them what had happened. He also explained what steps the government had taken. And today, the state government had also in his, uh, had also formed a special investigation team, SIT, under the leadership of a IG cadre officer. And all these people, whether it is Subba Reddy or Karanakar Reddy or Jagan Mohan Reddy, whoever is involved in this unforgivable sin will be severely punished. Will be severely punished. That is what the crores of Hindus across the globe, not only Hindus, people from all religions are demanding the strongest action because they have deliberately committed this sin. Deliberately. Just to earn money out of these ghee tenders, they have resorted to this unforgivable sin and people across the country also should understand this. We have clearly explained how all this transpired and what actually happened. So I hope that the YSRCP will at least now, you know, stop all kinds of false propaganda they are doing because you are caught red-handed. We have documented evidence in hand to prove that you have deliberately done this.